there was one little instance where people could still get access to your account, even if you were locked down with two-factor authentication. And that was actually through the Google Workspace Marketplace. It appears to be necessary in many cases to allow less secure apps to connect marketplace apps with Workplace, and even in some cases, native Google tools. What's the background behind this setting, and are there genuine risks in leaving this set to allowed for all users? Yes, there is a setting in the administration panel, I believe it's in security settings, which allows you to basically use your team's logins to connect using single sign-on to what it calls less secure apps. Now, I don't personally know the individual background behind this setting, but what I do know is the philosophy of Google and Apple and other top tier developers and operating system providers is as much as possible to try and do the best they can to stop security infiltrations and attacks happening on their platforms. Even if it was a third party developer or a third party app that was compromised or that was a complete scam, or had a security vulnerability that was basically to blame for the issue, Google or Microsoft or Apple are the ones that look bad. And if you have, as an example, an Apple computer, if it had a really weak operating system and it was getting hacked all the time and the computer was breaking all the time, the consumer is just going to think Apple computers are bad. I bought this Apple computer and it keeps having problems. And so the philosophy behind starting to restrict the different kinds of apps that are allowed to connect to these ecosystems, Google being an ecosystem, means that they're trying to basically bit by bit lock things down and stop unidentified developers or non-reviewed developers from accessing different areas of the ecosystem. And so that's basically what this button is referring to here, allowing a less secure app to connect to Google Marketplace or allowing a less secure app to connect to an individual account is basically you're loosening the belt a little bit on your security inside the business. Now, I'm not sure what our setting is internally inside our business. I would be curious for you to go through your team and go through your business and see what kind of apps are your team connecting to. Are there any of them that Google deems to be less secure? Uh, we haven't actually locked this down in our business, but it probably wouldn't be a bad setting for us to switch on. We do have a security officer in our business, so I'll probably be raising it with them and having them do a little bit of an audit. For most small businesses, this kind of like seesaw between convenience and security. And so these are the kind of things that you'd want to delve into if you've got at least 20 employees, starting to close some of the little one percenters on your security. For most business owners that we work with, the key things that you need to get right for your security are going to do an 80-20 on security for a small business. That's like getting two-factor authentication set up, using a password manager, something like LastPass, whether or not you use LastPass anymore is still up for question at the moment. Using things like security keys, if you want to get a bit more serious, a plug-in physical USB security key to access your account, and then making sure that you're not sharing any accounts between people. You're using tools like the delegated mailbox feature inside Google Workspace to share accounts between each other. So you're not just sharing passwords in plain text with each other. They're going to get you 80 to 90% of the way there of locking down the security. But as you grow and scale and you start to look a little bit more seriously at security in your business, and that becomes more important to actually plug the longer tail of the security holes or security vulnerabilities, this is a feature that you might want to look into. So great feature. Well, are there any genuine risks is the question. Yes, there is a genuine risk. The genuine risk is that one of your team members adds a third party developed tool to their account and there is a vulnerability in some way inside that tool, or they straight up click on a scam tool and then they get hacked that way. Now, let me share what one of those vulnerabilities looks like. For the most part, once you enable two-factor authentication, your Google account is pretty much locked down to anyone. There isn't really a way for someone to get into your account unless they steal your mobile phone in a sophisticated attack and port your number to somewhere else and use your phone number and your password to gain access to your account. That is certainly possible, but that's pretty rare. When Google had a big problem over the last couple of years with phishing emails, someone would send you an email, it would look like a Google Doc. You would click on that Google Doc and it would say, hey, please sign into your Google account to access this Dropbox file or access this Google document file. People would be putting in their username and password and that would send that off to a team of hackers because it was a fake web page that just looked like a Google Doc, which wasn't actually the real thing. And what that would do was, if you ever saw that happen, would go through all your contacts and spam all your contacts and then lock down your account and basically steal it from you. Pretty bad, right? Now, for the most part, when we implemented two-factor authentication, 
took the mobile phone number off two-factor, that solved all of those problems. So 90% of those security problems actually disappeared when we did that. However, there was one little caveat to that. There was one little instance where people could still get access to your account, even if you would lock down with two-factor authentication. And that was actually through the Google Workspace Marketplace. And what was happening was developers were creating tools and plugins that were then being listed into the Google Marketplace and they were sending out a phishing link and the phishing link, instead of going to a fake website, which was pretty easy for Google to detect and give users a warning, they would actually send you to a plugin. And that plugin would use Google's APIs to make a legitimate request to your account to log in and a legitimate request to your two-factor authentication, boom, they're into your account. And so in that case, locking down for less secure apps to not have access to your account may help. I don't know if the less secure accounts are setting in particular that you've referenced here in this question would help there, but what might actually be helpful is Google starting to lock down their marketplace in the same way that they're locking down the Android marketplace with identified developers, identified apps, and a lot more scrutiny in what applications and plugins are being added there. In general, you want to make sure that your team are not just adding random plugins to their accounts willy-nilly, but if we're in small business land, there is always going to be that balance of convenience and security, meaning that if, for example, you chose to switch from a blacklist to a whitelist in the plugins that your team can add, meaning that only plugins that you allow and specifically name one by one into your account, uh, what that would mean is that your team would lose out on being able to spontaneously add plugins to their account to get their work done. Every time a plugin needs to be added, they're going to have to reach out to you or reach out to the IT administrator inside your business and actually request that something gets added to the allowed list for them to get access to anything. So we're always kind of in this place of balancing security and balancing out convenience and balancing out how our end users are going to be working. And that's something that you get to manage as you grow and as you scale the business. If you like this content, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live or drop new content on the channel. Now, if you'd like to connect with us, hit us up on social media or join our free community group. All the links to that are right below this video. If you'd like to learn more about Google Workspace and the technology ecosystem, you can join our free Genius Academy by transferring your billing across to IT Genius, or you can join a Workspace Basics Bootcamp. Now, if you're a business owner and you're interested in an audit on your technology stack or your Workspace account, or you're looking to do a project in the tech world, well, you can take advantage of our free consultation. And if you need help right now, then consider joining Concierge or taking up a quick fix with our team for professional support for your tech stack.